to oh, share. Good, because I want to. I have a copy of your book uh, to show everybody the first guidebook to the American Discovery Trail that you wrote. And then also, just as a brief introduction, if you don't mind. But uh, you're going to be talking to us today about your role bringing Hike Nation from basically the Kentucky border all the way to Cape Henlope in Delaware. And originally the assignment was not that much, but somehow or another you wound up with it in your lap and you willingly accepted it, even though you're an accountant and it was tax season. You, you somehow <laughs> took this. Yes, yeah, so you took it on this. Right in the middle of tax season. Right. But I also want to just mention the thing that I find is really wonderful and fascinating about you is that uh, not only were you involved and active in volunteering with the Appalachian Trail Club, the Tidewater Club, and you became president of that, and then not only did you go from there to working with the American Hiking Society, and then uh, uh, from the American Hiking Society board, you helped out on Hike Nation, but also you were involved and active in, in a leadership role in the American, uh, the Ala Appalachian Trail Conservancy, and then, and then it evolved into the American Discovery Trail. So you're what I call a bridge man, because you have bridged all those different groups and cross-pollinated with ideas from each group and shared information, which I think has been very beneficial to the hiking community. Um, because uh, that's the kind of thing you need is to have that kind of networking and that kind of uh, institutional knowledge from different organizations to be able to get stuff done. So anyways, I just want to say thank you for that because you uh, have provided so much leadership at critical times in the hiking community. And now your new love is for raptors and you're banding thousands of raptors and protecting them forever and we nothing new about that i've been doing that yeah. for 48 years okay okay yeah. nothing yeah. new okay i stand corrected but anyways uh the show is yours we have all our hike nation friends here and they're all eager to hear the behind the scenes story that maybe they didn't know about while they were putting their boots on the trail okay so you can tell us all the dirt on these people and all the stuff that happened because I'm all ears, okay? I don't know the dirt. I want to know the dirt. The only dirt I know is that I've been digging in on making all these trails. So I hope you notice I'm wearing my Hikonation shirt. Believe it or not, after 42 years, I can still find it. And how about my postum that um, my little button there that Paula wants? She may not get. And my hike nation belt. But there's a problem. <laughs> it's gotten too small for me. <laughs> well, I'm glad you wore it. Oh my god. This also, is a, that's my bathroom cup. This is my oh, bathroom cup. <laughs> And when I'm not using that one, I'm drinking out of it. We got that one. So now that Paula has mentioned my book, I hope she'll show you that the very first picture in my book is you guys on the steps of the Capitol. Yeah. Because without you, there wouldn't be an American Discovery Trail. You set the foundation for what has become a 6,800 mile trail that goes from Delaware to California. So, how did all this get started anyway? In 1974, I read a two paragraph article in the local newspaper talking about a brand new organization called the Tidewater Appalachian Trail Club. And not knowing any better, I went to a meeting and next thing I knew I was president. Um, <laughs> as things like that happened. And then this guy in Florida named Jim something or other, Jim Kern, I think it was. Uh, I got a message from him saying, hey, I started a a national organization called American Hiking Society. And 
Darn, the next thing I knew I was treasurer. Those things happen. I don't know how that happens. If you're a CPA and people find out about that, you're often offered a job right away. And that's what happened to me. Things got worse from there. Uh, after Hike Nation, uh, it was about an eight year lapse. And then the uh, Backpacker Magazine, John Veeman and Peter Spires uh, attended a AHS board meeting and proposed that we join forces to create the nation's first permanent trail that goes all the way across the country. And that's what we've done. Uh, today, the American Discovery Trail of 6,800 miles has a double uh, trail through the Midwest from Denver to Cincinnati. So you can take the Northern route or the Southern route. And all that's because of what you guys did 42 years ago, 41 years ago. So I've got a surprise for Cindy. I'm gonna start this out with a surprise for Cindy. Cindy, step I gotta, up. Put, my, I gotta put my eyeballs on first. Step up. See, you wanna see Cindy? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where's Cindy? Come on, Cindy. 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 Right, right, right. Yeah, I see her. So, Cindy, this is a letter, an eight-page letter that you wrote me on February the 8th, 1981. Remember that? Yeah. <laughs> you can come by my house and pick it up because you only live a few miles from me. But I had uh, already started making arrangements for a big event in uh at Holland's College. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. And I was interested in getting some Virginians involved because in Lynchburg, we are going to dedicate a trail called the Blackwater Falls Trail. And we wanted a number of Hike Nation people there. And uh, we did. There were like seven or eight of us all together. We dedicated a trail. And Cindy, I know you remember this. We went to a pizza place for lunch and an amazing thing happened. They were all set up for us. They knew we were coming. Uh, they had this gorgeous salad bar all set up and we all ordered the pizza, mine with no cheese on it because I can't eat cheese. And the, uh, everybody got up and got their salad. And the young lady who was a waitress comes out and she says, I don't believe it. On a salad bar, there was not one leaf left. Absolutely <laughs> nothing. Ice and empty bowls. And she filled it up for us again. Remember that, Cindy? No, you don't remember that either. What you happened? I'm not taking my previa like I should be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. How many of you still have your Hike Nation yearbook? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly, that's in my uh, Hike Nation stuff. So, and I got to tell William that he's done a spectacular job on that Facebook site. Yeah. On there. Right on. I uh, wanted to kind of do those two little things before I got into just exactly how it came to be that you were on 534 miles of the Appalachian Trail before you got to Washington, D.C. Well, first of all, there was a lot of confusion about where you guys were in Kentucky. Uh, every time I got a message from Doug Phillips, uh, you all seem to be going a different route than what I'd been told. So as it turns out, I had no clue where you were coming into Virginia. And therefore, I didn't know how to plan a route through Virginia. But eventually, like two weeks before you actually got to the Virginia border, way down there in the southwest corner of Virginia, near Gate County, uh, I get a message from him saying he'd been fired from his job. Uh, 
that was kind of sad for him personally, but at least by that time, he had finally figured out where you're going to come into Virginia. Yes. Well, uh, because I was on the board of the Appalachian Trail Conference at that time, not Conservancy uh, Conference, I knew most of the people involved with the Appalachian Trail. I knew all the presidents of the clubs, like the Mount Rogers Club, the Roanoke Club, Natural Bridge, Old Dominion, uh, Potomac Appalachian Trail Club. So when the, I finally made the decision that the best way to get you to Harper's Ferry was on the Appalachian Trail, uh, I contacted all those people and said, hey, you've got this group of 7,000 hikers. Whoops. That's what the Shenandoah National Park Superintendent thought that 7,000 people like getting ready to hike through Shenandoah National Park. Guess what? He wasn't too happy about that. But also, the president of Potomac Appalachian Trail Club, somehow they didn't get the word that the 7,000 that crossed the Golden Gate Bridge were only down to about 50. And that's because you had a few people picking up along the way hiking with you. So after we got all that settled and so forth, it's amazing the cooperation that we got along the route. And one of the first people that contacted me was Ed Page. And this is his letter to me. Who is Ed Page? Well, Ed and I were serving together on the ATC board and he was president of the Natural Bridge Club at that time. And we knew each other quite well. Well, the president of the Mount Rogers Club, as it turns out, was also a good friend of mine, Dave Thomas. This is Dave Thomas's letter saying that they've made arrangements for y'all to stay at the Armory in Bristol, which I think was actually on the Tennessee line. Uh, so the state border between Tennessee and Virginia it goes right to the center of Bristol. Anyway, y'all will remember, that's where I met you, was at the Armory. That was my first encounter with you, other than some voice messages with Monty and Butch at the time. And maybe Bruce is Oli there. Did Bruce make it there? No, Bruce. There were a couple of the people. So also, in addition to that, your next stop was in Damascus. And this letter also said they've made arrangements for all to stay at what's called the place in Damascus, Virginia. So you all probably remember that. So this may not be in exactly the order that y'all hiked the trail because I just pulled this a sample. I have in my collection, which eventually I hope ends up in the hands of one of you, over 200 letters that I received or sent connection with getting you guys from uh, the beginning of the trail in Virginia, Southwest Virginia, to the Atlantic Ocean. So anyway, at some point, I've already talked to Paul about that. I hope to be able to send this stuff because these are all original letters. This is not copies of stuff. This is all original stuff. So this is talking about getting you to Harper's Ferry, but it's also the welcoming, welcoming dinner in uh, Parisburg and in Damascus and the starting of the planning for the event that uh, we had in Harper's Ferry, which is uh, very well supported by the Appalachian Trail Conference and by the National Park Service. So initially, uh, the Potomac Appalachian Trail Club, the president at that time was uh, Bill Hutchinson. They weren't too delighted about you guys getting ready to go through their shelter system in Shenandoah National Park. But finally, this is his letter to me saying, oh, are we grateful that those folks are coming to visit with us? Mm How -hmm. a change of attitude when they find out there was only going to be about 50 of you. <laughs> so, so here is the letter that I finally got from the Department of Interior National Park Service talking about 
hey, we finally figured out that these guys are going to come in Virginia and Southwest Virginia, so you can now do your planning, and we hope you're going to put them on the Appalachian Trail, which, of course, is what we did. And, you know, we got uh, lots of, of uh, support from the Damascus uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce. And you know, every year they have an annual event there for the Appalachian Trail, which goes right down the main street of Damascus. I don't know if any of all uh, attended that, but that's a really big event. Started out being like 50 people, and now it's thousands that show up for that event each year. Big deal in a small little place called Damascus. The other thing you may not know about Damascus is, you ever heard of the Conorock crew? Yes. Conorock crew. That's a summer work crew on the Appalachian Trail that takes on really big projects along the AT, particularly, well, in the South, Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia. And I was one of the people who helped start that group. And uh, we had our first meeting in Damascus in a Episcopal girls school that had been abandoned about 30 years. So at that time, the only other occupants of that building were bats. And the big table that we sat at had our meeting. We looked up and the grill or the fluorescent light was over the table and there are five or six bats hanging in the grills of that. <laughs> so that's a meeting. So here is the letter from the uh, National Park Service. We all know you were sponsored in part by the National. This is talking about how are we possibly going to get the uh, group from one end of the Appalachian Trail to the other, get them spread out, have a couple of events, that kind of thing. And again, this is talking about being 4,000 miles, how you all started April 12, 1980. So you know where you were April 12, 1981. Anybody remember? Holland's College. Holland's College. Holland's College. Yeah. So just to give you some idea, some of the behind the scenes work that was going on. So this is a letter from the uh, uh, executive director, Larry Van Meter, the Appalachian Trail Conference, uh, stating that they had full support of Hiking Nation coming through Harper's Ferry. And they've made arrangements for y'all to stay just out of town. You might remember that big open field. And they brought in potties for you and so forth. We had maybe 200 people at that event for you, all spread out at Harper's Ferry. Well, this was a letter that came from Ed Garvey. Y'all remember who Ed Garvey was? Yeah. Yeah. He was? He was the backpacker at the time. He was on the board of the uh, Appalachian Trail Conference, so I knew him, and he's the one that helped put the big event at Harper's Ferry together, and also led your hike from Harper's Ferry into Washington, D.C., down the CNO Canal. So that's part of what's in here. So y'all might not have known it, but here's the absolute detail, day-by-day -day schedule for you on the CNO Canal, telling you exactly what the distance was, where you were going to camp each night, and exactly what time you were going to arrive in Washington, D.C., and what you're going to do once you get in Washington, D.C., where you're going to stay. There aren't very many campgrounds in Washington, D.C. You all stay in motels? I don't remember. I remember that's what we did. And then we had a dinner at... Uh, at some high-rise uh, restaurant. Uh, actually, Chuck Sloan was involved in putting that uh, dinner together. But anyway, this is all the details for how you were to get from Harper's Ferry and who was to do what. So after you got there, this is a letter from the American Hiking Society. At that time, the executive director was Craig Evans, but uh, Tom Floyd, who was, um, became the president of Potomac Appalachian Trail Club, had a lot to do with putting all your uh, details together of what you were going to do once you got in Washington, D.C. Uh, the big event, I'm, I'm sure all of you remember, at the uh, 
uh, monument and then you know, walk over to the Capitol. Yes. Something you probably don't remember as we're approaching Pennsylvania Avenue with your banner and all of your flags and all that stuff. You probably don't know that there was a, a person, a, a tramp on the sidewalk who decided he wanted to be a part of Hike Nation. Actually, we're pretty sure he was a thief. I pointed him out to a motorcycle policeman and he'd never seen a skill better than he had. And he cut that guy right out of the parade, uh, right out of the middle of y'all. I just happened to be right there beside him when it happened. But y'all probably didn't notice that. If I hadn't been right there, I wouldn't have either. So this is another letter of getting through Shenandoah National Park, pointing out where the uh, potties were, uh, the restaurants, actually showing uh, uh, where you could stay each night, where the shelters were, how many people could be at a shelter. I think the most at one shelter was to be 10. <laughs> so you probably don't know about this document. This was the actual plan from the uh, Department of Interior Heritage Conservation and Recreation Service about your trip and all the uh, big information, not the actual details, but this is the information sheet. Maybe you got this in the mail. Maybe this is how you became a part of Hike Nation because this showed what the uh, trip was to be all about, how to prepare for it, that type of thing. Hmm. So, Holland's College. This was kind of a personal story for me. About two years before Hike Nation, uh, my wife, Melinda, and I had been doing some maintenance on the Appalachian Trail. And we had just finished. We had just gotten down to the Tai River, where the Appalachian Trail crosses before it goes up the Three Ridges. And here comes these two ladies carrying these 50-pound backpacks coming down off of the priest. Well, one of them's name was Judy Sublet. I don't remember the other lady's name. But anyway, they were trying to get to our Interstate 64 where they planned to get picked up because the next day they had a wedding at Wintergreen, which is one of those highfalutin residential areas that abuts right up next to the Appalachian Trail. Well, there's no way to actually hike that without taking about three days to get there. So uh, our wife and I suggested to them that we give them a ride. We had plenty of room in our big six passenger Pontiac station wagon. So they agreed. So changed their plans right there. And we drove them to Wintergreen, drove, dropped them off at the house where the wedding was to take place the next day. Uh, we got home in Virginia Beach and unpacked our car, and lo and behold, there is Judy Sublet's hiking stick. So what are you gonna do? I called Gene Cashin at the Appalachian Trail Conference, who was a good friend. Uh, everybody who's hiked the AT at that time knew who Gene Cashin was. I said, Hey, Gene, I got this hiking stick. Can I send it to you? These ladies are going to be there in about eight or 10 days. And sure enough, that's what I did. And Judy got her stick back. Good. Well, I found out later that she was the outdoor recreation instructor at Holland's College. So when I found out that your uh, group was going to be on the Appalachian Trail, and you're going to be going right past Holland's College on what day? April, April 12th. 12th. Exactly one year. This is her letter to me giving the schedule, telling you that she'd made arrangements for you to camp, made arrangements for you to use the gymnasium, use the showers, use the uh, uh, 
potties, and you can have dinner. You can have dinner for $4 and breakfast for $2, same as they were charging the students at that time. So this is my letter from Judy authorizing uh, that big event that we had there for two or three days. Wow, that's great. So uh, a name well known at that time was uh, Bill Kemsley. You all know who Bill Kemsley is, right? Yeah. Uh, he was the founder of Backpacker Magazine. And this is the article that he wrote about something called Hikination Fever and how it's spreading all around the country. And this was his article about you all hiking across the country and what you're trying to accomplish and bring an attention to the need for uh, particularly trail maintenance on trails. So I'm getting near the end here. This is one of the newsletters that the American Hiking Society put out describing what Hiking Nation was all about. And on the back side, it shows about the legislation and so forth, trying to improve trails, provide funding for trails, that type of thing that the uh, American Hiking Society was doing at that time. You all remember this? This was a Hiking Nation brochure that was published by American Hiking Society. Got your logo and so forth on there. I have several. I have several. I have several. Yeah, okay. So uh, one of the other groups, my trail club, y'all remember getting uh, a beef stew yeah. on the Appalachian Trail? Yeah. Well, that was provided to you by the Tidewater Appalachian Trail Club. Uh, I just came from a few hour and 15 minutes ago. Um, our, I'm on the committee to uh, celebrate our 50th anniversary coming up in October. Well, they're the ones that uh, put that together and fed you all as you were spread out before you got to Waynesboro. Now, some of you I know remember Waynesboro, and some of you somehow ended up in my living room floor. And uh, you rented a car, and I gave you a key to my house. And by the time Melinda and I got home, uh, none of you were there. But our living room floor was covered with sleeping bags. So we knew you'd been there. So Cindy might have been one. I don't remember who all was at. So another letter, this is actually from Ed Page again. Again, Ed and I were really good friends. We were both on the AHS and the ATC board at that time. But this is just as he's writing to let you all know that all the arrangements had been planned for Harper's Ferry. The last thing, I know you all getting tired of all this stuff. No. Uh, it's from the Appalachian Trail Conference. And this letter is showing their complete support of your efforts and uh, uh, pointing out the necessity for trails and trail maintenance. Of course, that's a big deal for the Appalachian Trail uh, is the volunteers that get out there and make the trail. So that's their letter of acceptance and saying that they're gonna participate and get all the club members uh, all the, along all the various clubs along the uh, AT in Virginia to support you. So any questions about any of that stuff I just showed you? That's just kind of an example of what was going on behind the scenes to get you all across that 534 miles. So any questions, questions about that? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. If you got a question, step up, you know, right up here and talk to the computer. No, oh, you probably can't back. hear you from the back. No, no questions at my, for me. <laughs> uh, I have some, right. I have questions. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, Reese. Can't talk to the screen. You have to talk to the Oh yeah, I got to talk to the computer. Talk to the computer. Okay, yeah, that's that better. Okay. You don't know. You don't want to know what part of you I was seeing. <laughs> I'm glad you backed up. Is this what I'm supposed to moon you? 
It's <laughs> like they did on the Chesapeake. Oh, it's funny. Well, I had three Boy Scouts get arrested by a national park ranger because as he uh, drove past, all three of them dropped their drawers and mooned him. He turned around and came back and they did it again. So he stopped and put all three of them in his patrol car. Oh, wow. <laughs> One of them was my son. <laughs> 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 it's nice to know you you uh, raised your kids well. Nice. Uh, right. after yep. you, I'm sure. Uh, I probably anyway. taught them how to do that. That's right. I'm <clears throat> sure you showed them the backside now and then. Um, anyways, a couple of questions or a couple of things I'd like for you to go over. Uh, one was the words of wisdom that you shared with everyone before they went over the Virginia mountains. Uh, do you remember that story you told me? I do. Uh, you all remember at the armory in Bristol, uh, a lot of you are packing up your winter stuff to go home. Well, it was still <laughs> winter. And you still had to go across the highest terrain in the Commonwealth of Virginia. And some of you got caught in a two foot uh, snowstorm trying to get to the Mount Rogers National Recreation Area. I uh, know you've got to remember that because we had to send out some National Park Service rescue teams to get some of you back out of the deep snow that you found yourself in. Yeah. Nobody going to admit that you were part of that? No. Here's a, here's a little uh, trivia type thing. I remember the snow being rescued. Anybody he doesn't, him? they're saying they don't remember being rescued, but I know that you had mentioned that you had advised everyone not to send their stuff away. Yeah, that, yeah that that's right. I think Terry, Terry there, because he was one of them, I think. Uh, I got a photo of me talking to him about that as he packed up his stuff. So here's a little trivia. One of the strangest names of a place in the United States is Goose pimple. You know where it is? Goose no. pimple was on, on the route between Damascus and Bristol. That was actually the name of the town. I got photos of you all there at the. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure they're posted on the uh, on the website. Anyway, so forty I years have later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Another question. Well, no, I, I have a, a multiple things that I want you to, to talk about, but you want to continue this? Nope. Go on. You're next. Okay. All right. So then uh, along the uh, way to the uh, Washington, D.C., you some of them went to the dedication of the Thurgood Marshall Aqueduct. Do you know? Can you talk about that? Uh, well, that was something that Ed Garvey arranged for y'all to do along the CNO Canal. I wasn't really involved in that, but some of you I know will remember when we were in Harper's Ferry going whitewater rafting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. yeah. And and one of the rafts, uh, <laughs> the uh, guide made the worst mistake possible and flipped all of you out of the raft. I've got a photo of his paddle going off uh, in 180 degree and the rest of you going head first in the water. Any of you wow. on that raft? Anybody on that raft? That. I, was actually, I was actually out of the raft standing on a rock. Wow. A photo of. Yeah, we lost Charlie. I thought we only lost Charlie out of the raft. It's Linda. That's Linda. I know who you are. <laughs> so anyway, I thought we only lost Charlie out of the raft. No, I think everybody went. <laughs> Knobstone. Yeah, the Knobstone Trail. All right. Well, uh, oh, yeah. what, what can you? What, what did I miss? He's asking about the Knobstone Trail. Oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I tell everyone I meet, don't do the Knobstone Trail. Oh, come on, that's part of the American Discovery Trail. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
got a photo of you and I at the science and non-stone trail. Yeah, it was a good time, but no, you don't do that trail. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, can you talk a little about the uh, the uh, hundred kilometer um, run walk that they were some of them signed up for and shipped yeah. off to go do? No, I don't want. I don't want to walk that. <laughs> it wasn't yeah, enough to down. hike on the trail. Yeah, you know, 61 miles between Washington, D.C. at the boathouse and Harper's Ferry is 100 kilometers. So they call it the 100 kilometers, but they sponsor that every year. I've done it twice. That's why my knees don't work today. Do 61 miles in one day. That's pretty hard on your knees and the rest of you too. Yeah. yeah, I know John Mills did it. He was telling me about it. Yeah, others. you probably don't remember me, Reese, but yeah, I was John? one of them. Bill, you were there with yep. another. I can't remember who else did it. I did. Uh, we were all sore. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty mind. crazy, isn't it? Yeah, pretty yeah, crazy. A friend of mine yeah, so, a friend of mine was doing it, and he uh, he slipped in the mud puddle because it was pouring rain, and he only got about half of it done that day, and I had to finish by myself. Yeah. Now, uh, do you want to say something about, so everyone's marching into D.C., and then uh, uh, everyone was expecting this massive publicity and media coverage, and a big event happened that day. You want to share that? Uh, yeah, let's see. That was, uh, actually, I forgot what oh. it was. Oh, you got shot at. The Pope yeah. got shot at. Oh, yeah, that, that's right. And that took all the press away from that day. We didn't get the big event that we had planned for. Yeah. yeah. So anyways, that was a disappointment, huh? Because uh, yeah. I think some of the congressmen didn't show up because of that, right? Yeah, but uh, the longest term congressman, uh, I think in history, Strom Thurmond is the one that addressed you all that day. Yep. And, and that's because he was into physical fitness and he was uh, big on the president's fitness council. He was also in his 80s, I think, at that time. In his 80s, you're right, yeah. So anyways, okay, so now the group originally decided that the, the hike was just going to DC. You know, that's what Jim Kern signed up for, is taking everybody to DC. But then that's somewhere along, told. huh? Somewhere along that's the way, it morphed told. into, Let's go to the ocean. So talk about that. Yeah, I thought my job was over when you all made it to the Capitol steps. And then about, I think you all were already in Virginia someplace along the way. And I found out that, oh, no, we're going to the Atlantic Ocean. This is Pacific to the Atlantic. And I said, oops. So, <laughs> uh, we did eventually find a route, and as it turns out, the people in Delaware were more than excited. They were really delighted, uh, particularly Pat Cooper, who is a superintendent at Cape Pendleton State Park. Uh, they were all revved up about y'all being there because uh, Lewis, Delaware was still a, a little recreation spot uh, and uh, not very well known. Uh, so you brought a lot of publicity to that little Dutch settled uh, town of Lewis, Delaware. And today that is also the terminus of the American uh, Discovery Trail. And big sign there that uh, promotes that. The big difference is uh, on the east side of Washington, DC, US 50 at that time, was only four lanes, two going in and two going out of Washington, D.C. And most of the land between Washington, D.C. and the Delaware line were dairy farms. Today, there's not a dairy farm anywhere around there. It's 12 lanes, about 50. Uh, but the same problem remains after you get out of Annapolis, that, that is getting across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Yeah. Uh, it's actually easier then 
because when Hike Nation went across, you could call the uh, bridge and they'd send a maintenance truck over there. How many of you rode across the bridge? Because you couldn't walk across the bridge. How many of you rode across? And some of you got taxis, I think, to take you across. Uh, some of you went across in the maintenance vehicle. They don't do that anymore. They haven't been doing that for years. Kind of was too expensive. But the folks in Delaware uh, were very excited about uh, the trail. For one thing, there's no National Park Service unit in Delaware. So kind of uh, uh, make a little change in direction here. What's the bottom line? How did all of this come out? Uh, currently, the 6,800 mile American mm -hmm. Discovery Trail We've been trying to get that designated as part of the national trail system since 1994. And uh, passed the Senate three times with legislation. We almost passed the House one time, uh, but we're still working on it. We have legislation right now pending before Congress, and we have 60 members of the House signed up supporting the trail. Uh, the Senate co-sponsor is actually from Delaware, uh, Senator Coons. If you watch TV and watch the news, usually when they're interviewing somebody about something's going on, uh, it's likely to be Senator Coons. He's a really good friend of President Biden. Um, you know what the main center in uh, Cape Hennepin? It's named the Biden Center for President Biden's father. So we're hoping to use that as a little bit of leverage. when. Uh, when President Biden visits Camp uh, Cape Hennepin, which he does occasionally, he actually rides on the American Discovery Trail on his bicycle. So we hope to get that message to him. The trail's pretty well marked in, in, the, uh, uh, in the state park. So y'all might uh, not remember, but this was a nice little piece that Backpacker Magazine did about the American Discovery Trail a few years ago. And uh, it's all a product of what you all started out doing 42 years ago. So today it's becoming, and it is reality. There are people out there doing the American Discovery Trail right now. We've had people, there are four books now. My book was the first, but three other books have been written about the American Discovery Trail. One of them by a lady uh, who's a Lutheran minister. She's in her 70s. Uh, she did the uh, northern route. Now she's starting out in a couple of weeks to do the southern route through the Midwest. So. Reese, can you talk about, talk about the difference between the old hike nation route and the current route of the ADT? Yeah, so we do use parts of the route that was the original hike nation but uh, the purpose for uh, hike nation and the American Discovery Trail were quite different. The uh, primary purpose behind Hike Nation was principally to uh, point out the need for trails and particularly getting volunteers involved in trail maintenance, that type of thing. But uh, the American Discovery Trail, if you read the very first section of the National Trail System Act of 1968, it talks about a system of trails, including local trails and the American Discovery Trail route today goes through Annapolis, Washington, D.C., Petersburg, uh, West Virginia, Cincinnati, Ohio, Denver, Des Moines, Oakland, San Francisco, you can name uh, through the middle of the country, Omaha, Nebraska, Council Bluffs, Iowa. Uh, that was the main goal. Uh, between 1980 and 1989, there was something called the Trails for All Americans proposal. Uh, Butch and I were a part of helping to write that. It was endorsed by the National Park Service. And the goal of that was to have a connected system of trails that stretched throughout the, uh, our great country. 
And that's the primary purpose of what the American Discovery Trail, it's been described as the backbone of the national trail system. So including all those metropolitan areas, uh, the development all across our nation of regional and local trail systems uh, has uh, led, and the American Discovery Trail has led a lot of that effort. Uh, a recent change in the last couple of years was in Northwest Indiana, where four counties got together and made a proposal to the American Discovery Trail that we include them in their route. Uh, if you know about the, uh, uh, the River River Trail in Illinois, uh, the Cardinal Greenway in Indiana, the North Bend Rail Trail in West Virginia, the Flint Hills Trail in Kansas. They're all parts of the American Discovery Trail. And that's because local people have uh, expressed their interest in being a part of this great uh, trail system. Uh, the American Discovery Trail connects 30,000 miles of trail in the United States. That's been mm -hmm. our goal from day one. Hmm. Any, anyone have more questions? Um, lastly, I just know this is a passion of yours, so we might as well ask you about it. Tell us what you're doing with the uh, eagles and the osprey and, and all the raptors where you're living. And uh, Yep, yeah, uh, that was another left turn that I made instead of going right back in 1974. What had happened was I was a professional musician and also a CPA. And um, both of them were occupying a great deal of my time. But as it turns out, uh, I was having more and more conflicts because I was a partner in a, in a CPA firm and directing all these different uh, jobs and audits and so forth. And something had to give. And making money was more important than making music. So I had to give up the music. But what do you do when you have spare time? Uh, and I'm not going to sit around and watch soap operas. So next, I had started the Boy Scout troop in 1973 with two other guys. And actually, the reason I got involved in trails and birds and so forth was a way to get the boys involved. Not me. I was interested in uh, getting the boys out on the trails, uh, getting them involved in nature. And then somehow I caught the disease. <laughs> and the one said it's an incurable disease. And I've been doing it ever since. So uh, on the last 40 some years, I have become a raptor specialist for the College of William and Mary. And have banded about 12,000 eagles and osprey and peregrine and other species. Uh, this particular time of season is the absolute busiest for me because we have bald eagles, chicks hatching in the nest. We have osprey returning uh, from their uh, six month vacation in South America and peregrine falcons in the process of laying their eggs. Um, one of the unique situations I had developed in the last two weeks is I've had a pair of peregrine falcons lay their four eggs in a flower pot on a high rise condo on the balcony outside the bedroom of one of these high rise condos in Virginia Beach. It's not actually a flower pot. I call it that. It's actually a vegetable planter that this uh, the resident uh, has been raising her uh, her herbs like basil and so forth. Uh, but she won't go do that this year because the peregrines have laid their eggs right in the middle of her garden or what was to be her garden this year. So that's one of the kind of things I deal with. All right, well, I, I guess no other questions or we just want to so thank you. Huh? Is Jim Kern there? I wanted to say hello to him. I haven't seen him for a couple of years. He, he hasn't made it yet. But Paul Pritchard is here. Oh, Paul is there. How yeah, are you? In peace today. Actually, I mentioned, I mentioned the Trails for All Americans. 
And Paul will remember this because I said to you, okay, you remember all those meetings we had in your office putting together oh, yeah. that Trails for All Americans program? That's right. And what an interesting You remind me. spent all that time the uh, National Park Service shelter. You, you, uh, one of the interesting things about the day the group was in Washington was that I had left Interior and went over to MPCA, and we couldn't get anybody from the White House. Reagan had been elected, and where we thought we were going to get someone from the White House to greet the group. And finally, I asked Strom Thurmond, who I knew for another reason, and because of the reason you mentioned, the national phys uh, fitness programs that he was involved in. And he was just thrilled to be there to, to uh, welcome the group. But what an interesting uh, guy to have greet a bunch of conservationists. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that was uh, quite a time. Craig Evans was on Bill's staff. And then yeah. I, 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 I paid him at MPCA to work uh, as the first head of the uh, uh, American Hiking Society. Uh, I don't know where Craig is now, but he was. Uh, he was quite a writer and quite a, uh, I think he was an associate editor for Bill. Um, yeah, he was for a while. He has his own company in DC. Does he really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's gotten into energy and environment or something. That's great. Mm -hmm. Interesting group of people and all everybody uh, loves you, Reese, and uh, the tremendous job you did. So uh, yes. this has been just yes. phenomenal watching this guy. Well, I, also, I can tell you, I can I also, tell you, hiking changed my life immensely. And it not uh, for my getting involved, I uh, probably wouldn't have, uh, you know, I've had seven trails from, named for me locally. Uh, wow. None of that would have happened had I not been involved in hiking Nation. Yeah. Thank you, Reese. Uh, I also let uh, Reese one more thing. I just want you to know Larry Luxenberg is here and he, he got to hear well, some, of your, yeah. some of your. I haven't seen Larry for a couple of years. Yeah, yeah, I see you there. Yeah, hi, Reese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I hope, Larry, that my support for the museum has been beneficial because you've done a fantastic job with the AT Museum in Pennsylvania. It's a great endeavor, and I hope one day I'll save every scrap of paper uh, I've generated and uh, the development of the American Discovery Trail. And I hope to follow your example or somebody, I'm at 83, I'm not gonna be around for so much longer. Somebody does the same thing for the American Discovery Trail and creates a museum in the likeness of what you've done. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a great thing to do, Reese. Thank you, Reese, so very, very much. You're always such a pleasure to talk to. Absolutely. And uh, we uh, we will definitely stay in touch, okay? All right. Well, thanks very much. You're a great bunch of, of people. And I hope you appreciate the foundation you laid across this country for uh, what today is a 30,000 uh, mile system of trails. Thank you. We connect the Pacific to the Atlantic, all the way across the country. Everyone's sending you love and hugs and kisses, okay? All right. Okay. See all. Bye. All right. Bye. Okay, what, Mike, what do I do? Thank you. can't turn it off. There we go. Now we can look at ourselves. Oh. <laughs>